I'm going to run you through some quick steps for using the X-Rite color checker, both the full size color checker, this is the video version, and I'm also going to have a quick look at the passport version, which gives you basically the same information with an additional focus checker um, in a nice handy hard shell for carrying around with you, slipping in a pocket. No excuse not to have it with you when you've got one that size as well. What we're going to talk about first of all is white balancing with these charts. This is a spectrally flat grey. Now what that means is as the light hits it, all frequencies are reflected from it. So in other words, it doesn't absorb any frequencies of light as it gets hit. So you get an accurate interpretation of the colour that's hitting your subject. And in fact, that's the second point. It should be where your subject is. I'm the subject for this, so it's where I am. Um, it can be very tempting to move these right over to where the camera is, but the light over there is completely different from the light here. And there's a couple of different tricks that you can use to balance this, both in camera and once you get back home and in your edit suite. So we're going to look at how we can do that in post in a um, later part of this video. But right now, a quick tip for in camera, you can manually adjust your white balance in pretty much any camera. You can set the Kelvin to pretty much where you want it to be. But I prefer to take samples and do a, a, a manual balance. You point it at a grey target and you tell it to sample from that. The focus side of this, by the way, is pretty straightforward. Stick it where your subject is. If it's a person, I'd always recommend focusing on their eyes. So it's a good idea to have this right next to uh, their face so that you can check that the focus is accurate where their eyes are. Um, and because of the converging lines here, it's actually incredibly easy to tell when it's in or out of focus. Another really nice feature of this chart is the 90 IRE white, 40 IRE grey and 20 IRE dark grey chips on the front that allow you in conjunction with zebras being set to 90% in camera to quickly judge when your image is perfectly exposed. So those are some tips for using these charts within the production process. So actually they're on set or wherever you may be. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go across into our editing suite. We're going to take our footage. We're going to look at how these charts are um, useful once we get inside the computer, how we can push and pull our colors around and our contrast around to get the most balanced and, and accurate image that we can. OK, so I'm going to launch Adobe Premiere Pro. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to check that white balance. In this project, I have two very short clips. So using the window workspace layout menu, I'm going to change to the color layout, which will bring up everything I need to do this. And I'm going to apply in the effects tab the lumetri color effect. I'm going to drop that onto both clips. I'm now going to go to the video scopes tab and I've got my parade up here at the moment. Now there's a temperature slider in the lumetri color controls which I can adjust along with the magenta green tint to make sure that I have my balanced image. So remember if the red, green and blue channels are equal, the part of the scopes that relate to the white balance chart will be equal. They will line up because it is spectrally flat. They should be each level with each other. The other thing I can do then is I can flick over to my um, Luma waveform monitor and I can adjust the contrast of my image to make sure that the chips are falling where they should do. I have on the front side of the chart my 90% reflectance, 18% reflectance, um, dark grey and glossy black chips. So what I'm looking to achieve is that the black is right down at zero. So I'm using the uh, colour wheels and I'm pulling down the shadow brightness so that the black is at zero IRE. Because my in-camera exposure was pretty spot on, actually the mid, the gamma part of the image is pretty much spot on. The 18% reflectance is appearing at the correct 32, 35% IRE part of the scope. I can push that up a little if I want, but I'm also going to make sure that my highlight detail in the window behind me is, is not clipped. It's, it's within uh, the 100 IRE part of the scopes at the top. So I've got all my highlight and shadow detail. Contrast is looking good. Next thing is to then push some saturation into the image, again using the adjustments part of the lumetri color controls. And the saturation should 
be falling roughly around 50% on the vector scope. So 0% in the middle, 100% at the outer edge. So about halfway out from the middle in the scope. And there is in fact an overlay here to show you roughly where they should be falling. So I'm looking to find the most saturated parts of the chart, which will appear as little spikes out towards red, yellow, magenta, cyan, green and blue. And I'm just going to add in saturation until those saturated colours are hitting around the 50% saturation mark. And that should then give me the perfect balanced image. OK, so I'm just going to launch Final Cut Pro 10. I'm going to open up my scopes with Command 7 and I'm also going to open up my colour correction tools using Command 6. I'm going to change over to the RGB Parade and I'm just going to check that the parts of the scope that relate to the grey chart are all in alignment. There's slightly more blue, so I'm actually going to just move my mid-tone um, control across to blue and then just bring that down a bit so that they are perfectly aligned with each other. They're the same height, in other words, there's no colour dominance. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip to the colour chart side of this. So that's got the colour chips on it and the large exposure chips on there. And I'm going to flick over to my Luma waveform. The large chips make it easy to see the black chip at the bottom. And I want that to be at the bottom of my scope. So at zero IRE, that's where black should live. So I pull that down using the exposure part of my colour correction tools. I push the gamma, so that's the mid-tones, just up a little bit to try and get the 18% grey to appear. That's the second chip down from the top in the middle. To get that to appear around about the sort of 40, 35 to 40% point on my scopes. I'm now going to zoom in. I'm just going to check the saturation. So I have the saturated chips on the left-hand side of the chart, right-hand side of screen. And those should be falling about halfway along the, the vector scope. So... If you want something to easily judge it against, you can use the flesh tone line that travels up along this line here. So I'm just going to add in saturation until those spikes of saturation on the red, green, magenta, blue, yellow and cyan chips are about 50% saturated. Now another thing I can do is I can use a colour mask to sample my skin tones and check that they are in alignment with the skin tone chips on the chart. Now, what I can do is I can click the View Masks button and that will turn it into a black and white mask. And then it makes it much easier for me to tell whether or not they are selected together. And you can see here that the skin tone chips and my face are white. That means that they are equally selected, which means they fall within the same range. They are selected together. That means my skin tones match the skin tone references on the chart. In other words, I've got perfect skin tones, a nice balanced image, saturation where I want it, and I've got a lovely balanced image ready to work from. Okay, so I'm going to launch DaVinci Resolve, and I'm going to go and first of all show you the colour match feature within Resolve. So first of all, we choose the X-Rite Colour Checker video as our chart type. We line up the grid over the colour chips. We choose our source gamma, S-Log2 in this case, the target gamma being Rec. 709, which is a standard HD gamma, and then we hit match. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job. I'll also show you this process manually achieved and how that allows you to be a little bit more accurate with your adjustments. So let's start with exposure. I'm going to move the um, controls around the four different chips in the middle. So we've got the 90 IRE, 40 IRE, 20 IRE and glossy black. Remember the glossy black, because it's glossy, if it's reflecting any kind of light, it can sometimes give you a slightly higher reading than it would do otherwise. So make sure you've got no reflections there. In a completely balanced image, black would be at zero. So that's what I'm going to do first of all. I'm going to bring down my lift brightness so that that bottom chip lines up with the bottom of the chart at zero. I should find that the second chip down, now that's got an, a reflectance of 18%, that should be falling just below the 384 mark on my waveform scope inside Resolve. Of course, actually the brightest thing in this scene is not the 90% reflectant chip, but the 
window behind me. So you do need to use a little bit of common sense here and you have to pull down those highlights or push them up so that your highlight detail, whatever is the brightest thing in your image that should have detail in it, is at the top of the scopes at one volt or 100 IRE. So that's what I'm doing here. That's one of the things that I'm able to judge intelligently by doing it this way, whereas the color match feature within Resolve will just push out that detail in the highlights. Now the next thing to do is to just move that mask along and now just focus on the 50% saturation color chips. We have a yellow, red, magenta, blue, cyan and green chip and by isolating them with the mask only these colors are going to show themselves in my scopes. So I'm going to move over to my vector scope now and I'm at a two times magnification so the boxes for red, magenta, blue, cyan, green and yellow are falling at the appropriate points of saturation. They are known quantities and they should line up with these color chips. With the hue versus hue control, move them so they line up with their chips. The saturation level is of a lesser concern. You can push it up a little bit, but as soon as you start to see those traces starting to look kind of thin and, and less cohesive, that's your clue that the signal's now starting to break down and you should just rein it in a bit. So, with those colours now accurately pointing, and as saturated as I dare push them, I'm now going to remove my mask, and that will essentially apply that primary grade to the whole image. And we can see, spot on, absolutely perfect, very accurate, very repeatable, doesn't matter how many different scenes I shoot in any location, if I'm using these charts, a standard balanced image like this should be the result of this type of work. I am just going to check my skin tones and a quick way to do that in Resolve is to use your hue saturation luminance qualifier. You just simply drag over whatever colour you are trying to isolate, in this case my skin, so I'm dragging across my face. And if everything is normal and balanced and accurate then you should find that the skin tones you select will also appear selected as the skin chips on the chart and you can see here they are bang on. My skin tones and the colour chips, they're all in the same small narrow range. You can see that range on the vector scope following up the skin tone line there. So I've actually got the perfect skin tones. They're absolutely right and that is a result of both using the white balance side of the chart in production and then using the hue versus hue and hue versus sat controls to manipulate my image to make it as balanced as possible once I'm back in my computer.